One of the best ways to start creating new diagrams in Microsoft Visio is start using templates. Templates are available if you click on the File tab and select New. You can find templates among many different categories, for example, Network, Flowcharts, Software, Education, Business, Database, or Floor Plans. Or you can find template that you need by typing the name of the template that you might be looking for, for example, UML in my case. And if something that you need is available in the list. If you're unsure which template do you need, you can start with the basic diagram or blank drawing. I'm going to click on the basic diagram to start my Visio diagram. In your typical Microsoft Visio workflow, you will start by selecting the template. You use Microsoft Visio by using ribbon interface with its tabs, groups, and commands. You access all the shapes that you need through the palette, stencils, and shapes. To start creating the diagram, you just drag the shape into the diagram, and from here you can do multiple things. You can double-click on the shape and add a title to the shape. You can access additional features of the shape by using right mouse click. And as you can see, you can cut, copy and paste the shapes, you can change features of the font, or you can access shape properties. Most of the commands you need to use Visio are located on the Home tab. In fact, Microsoft claims that 80% of the times you will be spending in the Home tab. On the Home tab, you can access clipboard commands, you can change fonts properties. For example, you can increase the size of the font once shape is selected, or decrease the size of the font. You can realign the font through the paragraph group. You can access to the tools. There are six different tools in the tools section. You can access to the shape styles. For example, if you're not happy with the style of the shape, once it's selected, you can change the style of the shape and select the one that you like. One way to add more shapes into the diagram is just to drag another shape and place it next to the first one. You can see that Visio provides grid lines, which allows you to place the shape aligned with the previous shape. This allows you to build professional diagrams very quickly. Once we've added the second shape, we can double-click on it and give it a title. You see that the font sizes are different between the shapes. One cool feature Microsoft Visio provides is to copy format from one shape to another. To do that, you need to use Format Painter. And you use Format Painter by selecting the original shape from which you're trying to copy the format. Click in Format Painter, clicking on the shape to which you would like to copy the format to. As you have two shapes now, you might consider connecting them. You connect the shapes using Connector Tool. You select the Connector Tool and drag the line from one shape to another. As you can see, now line is selected and Visio provides shape styles for line. We can change the shape styles by selecting among the available styles. Since there are so many commands in the ribbon, Microsoft Visio provides you ability to find commands you might be looking for with the option Tell Me. For example, even though Zoom In and Zoom Out features are available in the bottom right corner and you can use them, let's say that you don't know where there might be. All you need to do is to go to the Tell Me box and type Zoom. And it will show you that there are multiple different Zoom options available. And you can zoom specifically based on the percentage that you'd like to zoom or based on the page size. In addition to being able to find specific zoom size, you can also fit the diagram and switch to the presentation mode. Both of these features are located next to the zoom bar. For example, if you're trying to fit it to the window, you click the Fit to the Window button. And if you're trying to switch to the presentation mode, it will remove all ribbons and you will have full screen access to your diagram. To exit the presentation mode, you click the Escape button. Visio allows you to have multiple diagrams inside single VSDX file. You create multiple diagrams by accessing Diagram Tabs feature. When we created blank Visio file, it added one single tab, which is called Page 1. You can rename this tab by double-clicking on it, and I'm going to give it a name, Vendor Relationship. You can add additional tabs by using this plus sign, or you can duplicate an existing diagram by right mouse clicking on this tab and selecting Duplicate. Clicking plus signs adds new blank diagram into the Visio file versus duplicates previous diagram that you've selected for duplication. Once you're done working on the diagram, you can save it as Visio file or export it as PDF or image. There are multiple different formats available for you. For example, the key ones I use as PDF. You can also export it as video as MP4 file, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. There are two types of process flow diagrams Microsoft Visio supports and provides templates for, basic flowchart and cross-functional flowchart. Basic flowchart allows you to define process flow. 
versus cross-functional, which is also called swim lane flowchart, allows you to define process flow, but in addition you define actors in separate swim lanes. And this diagram is extremely helpful to separate roles and responsibilities, specifically for asymmetrics. The best way to create basic flowchart process flow diagram is to use basic flowchart template in Visio. I used it recently, so it shows up in my recently viewed templates. If you don't see it right away, you can search for it using the search bar and select it from the search results. To start creating the diagram, all you need to do is to drag shapes into the diagram and start connecting them. I'm working with Patricia on the marketing project to create a video for our Flagman product. We both report to John. Because of the extremely heavy workload, John suggested that we add additional team member into our team. John gave us five considerations to build effective hiring process. He suggested that we should first define job description for the position. We should build this job description, keeping in mind internal and external candidates. He also suggested that we should define where we're going to advertise open role. And he recommended that we screen resumes for external candidates and talk to the managers for internal candidates. He also suggested that we set upfront rules for the interview and the hiring decision process. Every basic flowchart diagram has a starting and ending point. You use the start shape to define the start of the process and then add a text start into the shape of the diagram. Rectangular boxes define process shapes. You add the description for the process step into the rectangular box. For example, as John suggested, the first step in every recruitment hiring process should be defined job position description. You add title to the diagram by using the text tool. You select the text tool, select the area, and type the name of the diagram. There are three main tools that you most likely will be using and switching between in Microsoft Visio. You use pointer tool to work with shapes. You use connector tool to connect shapes. And you use text tool to add text into the diagram. All three tools are located on the home ribbon tab and you can see currently selected tool in the tools group on the ribbon. There are three major ways how you can add additional shapes onto the diagram. You can drag the shape, and you see Visio has grid lines that allows you to position the shape among the existing shapes to make diagram look professional. Once you've added additional shape and updated the text on the shape, you can connect both shapes using connector tool. You select connector tool and drag the line from one shape to another you need to switch back to pointer tool to add additional shapes to the diagram. Second major way to add shapes onto the diagram is to select existing shape, use copy, and use paste. You can update the text on the copied shape in a very similar way, and then you can drag the shape to position it at the same distance and along the grid lines with existing shapes. You need to switch to the connector tool to drag the line from the existing shape to the new shape. And the third and probably the most effective way of adding shapes into the diagram is to use the extension tools in Visio that are available for the flowchart diagrams. To see them better, I'm going to zoom in, and then once you hover the shape, you see the extension triangle, which shows all available shapes that you can add and connect from the existing shape. For example, my next step is the decision, whether this is internal or external candidate. To add decision into the flowchart diagram, I need to use diamonds. And as you can see, once I selected the diamond, it added not just the diamond, but also added a connector from the existing shape to the diamond. Typically, the decision on the decision shape is Boolean, yes or no, but sometimes it depends based on the question that you're asking in the decision box. In my case, the hiring process might be different for internal versus external candidates. For internal candidate, I might choose to talk to the manager, and I will represent this step with the action box for the process flow. I may also consider specifying that this is an internal branch in the process flow by selecting and double-clicking on the arrow and adding internal text. For external candidates, my process might be slightly different. I may choose to do initial phone screening to get the initial impression about the candidate and to determine their interest and salary range for the position they're applying for. My next step might be the same for both types of candidates as I would need to make a decision whether to invite them for the interview. Considering the circumstances, one of the best way to represent the step might be to copy an existing shape and paste it as a new shape. Once I rename this shape, I can position it along with other shapes and connect it from both internal candidate as well as external candidate 
as I would need to make a decision whether to invite them for the interview. If you've noticed that something is missing, for example, external branch is missing on the arrow, you can just double click on the arrow and add the text. Sometimes you may also realize that you connected arrows to the wrong places on the box. For example, decision box typically has one input and at least two outputs. And it is, might be hard for me to represent the output from this decision without crossing the lines. So I might consider changing the input lines to the left input place in the diamond shape. To do that, I would need to select the line and drag the end point of the line and connect it to a different input point. I can also consider doing the same thing for another line. Now I will be able to show both positive and negative decision outputs right on the diagram. For example, for negative decision, I might choose to send an email and I'll show this as a process flow step with the appropriate text. I can send either email or regular mail letter and you would want to separate actions with some sort of separator. And I chose to use slash, but you can use something else on your diagram. To show that this is a negative decision, you might want to add no to the arrow that is output from the decision making process. If you choose to invite candidate to the interview, you may consider showing this as a process step in the diagram. The process step might have a name in person interview, or you might consider reflecting that this also might be a Zoom meeting because of the COVID-19. After conducting the interview, you may need to make a decision. If you choose to hire a candidate, you might consider communicating this information to the candidate in the form of letter of offer. And you would need to reflect it with the yes flow on the diagram. If you choose not to hire a candidate, your process might reflect sending a rejection letter to the candidate. And you reflect it with the connector, connecting it to the send rejection email process step. And you might highlight this branch as the no branch on the diagram. As usual, if you notice that branches are missing, for example, in my case, invite for the interview is missing the yes text on the arrow, you can always add it by editing the arrow in the diagram. Communicating offer to the candidate concludes this process flow and can be reflected with the and symbol on the diagram. In a similar way, sending rejection email also concludes the process flow and could be concluded with the same symbol. Keep in mind that process flow can only have one starting point but can have multiple endpoints. The easiest way to start building swim lane diagram in Microsoft Visio is to find swim lane template. Template comes with the title area as well as the two swim lanes. To assign your own title to the diagram based on what you're trying to build, you double click on the title and type the new name. You assign names to the swim lanes in the same way by double clicking the name of the swim lane and typing the new name. You draw the diagram by dragging the shapes from the stencils area in Microsoft Visio onto the diagram. Every swim lane diagram typically has a starting point and for our particular process of purchase order approval process, the requester will be gathering details for the purchase order and creating purchase order approval request. Microsoft Visio provides you three different ways to add shapes to the diagram. You can drag shapes from the stencils area right onto the diagram. Once shape is in place, you can double click on the shape and add the required text. To connect the shapes, you need to switch to connector tool and draw the line in between the shapes. Second way of adding shapes onto swim lane diagram is by copying shape and pasting it. You can update the text on the shape in the same way by double clicking on the shape and replacing existing text with the new text. When you drag this shape, Visio provides grid lines so you can place the shape along with other shapes on the same diagram. And you draw the line between the shapes by switching to connector mode and drawing the line. The third way of adding the shape is the easiest because it allows you to add the shape and connect the line in the same step. To do that, you use triangles at the end of the shape and pick the next step from the list of available shapes. And as a last step, type the text by double clicking on the shape and typing the text. As you can see, by using the third method, we've accomplished multiple objectives. We created new shape, new line was automatically added, and shape was placed along with other shapes to make the diagram look very professional. There are three main scenarios when you might consider using cross-functional swim lane diagram. The first scenario is when you need to define specific actors. 
you need to specifically outline who is doing what in the process. Second scenario is when you need to define specific roles and responsibilities. And the third scenario is combination the first two, as organization frequently use RACI matrix to define who is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed in the process flow. Typically, after order is created in the system, direct supervisor or manager need to approve the acquisition. To do that, we need to show this as a step in another swing lane. Because this is a decision step, we need to show it with the diamond shape, but I already put in the rectangular shape, which shows the process. In fact, I did it on purpose to demonstrate you another cool capability of Microsoft Visio of changing the shapes. You do it by navigating to the home ribbon and choosing the change shape button, where you can pick the shape and replace one shape with another shape. You type the text in the diamond shape the same way as you would do in the regular shape. Typically, for the decision shape, there is one input and multiple outputs. One output might be when manager doesn't approve the request. We need to show it with the end shape. And to show the branch of not approving, we double click on the line and type the text. If manager approves the request, it needs to go to procurement department for processing. As you can see, we don't have a procurement department swim lane, and we can edit in multiple ways. One way is to drag the swim lane from the stencils box directly onto the diagram, and then snap it right into existing diagram. Another, and I think much easier way, is to select an existing swim lane, right mouse click, and say insert swim lane after. To give diagram a title, you double click on the existing title and type the new name. Typically, procurement department starts their process by requesting quotes from multiple vendors. To reflect this, we need to add a process step in the procurement swim lane, then add a title to the process box, and then connect shapes using connector. We also would like to make sure to reflect that this happens after manager approves the original request. Procurement department is typically also responsible for selecting the vendor. They do it as another process step in the diagram, and we can reflect it as a separate shape in procurement swim lane. As you might have noticed, I was frequently switching between pointer tool and connector tool in Microsoft Visio. These tools are among three most used tools in Microsoft Visio application. In addition to pointer and connector tool, there is also a text tool, and all three of them are located in the tools section of the ribbon. You use pointer tool to position the shapes. With the pointer tool, you can drag the shape, you can resize the shape, and you can access properties of the shape. Using connector tool, you can connect shapes by dragging the line and connecting the two shapes. You need to switch back to the pointer tool to delete the line. And you delete the line by selecting the line and clicking cut or using delete button on the keyboard. The text tool allows you to bring in text into the diagram. When you select the text tool, you position the cursor and you start typing. To delete the text, you need to switch back to the pointer tool Select the text and either use cut or delete button on the keyboard. Once vendor is selected, procurement department is also responsible to update original order with how they've made a decision and which vendors they have contacted. And as a next step, they are in charge to request approval from CFO, Chief Financial Officer. I want to pinpoint that what just happened is very cool. We've added a shape that originally didn't fit into the diagram but Microsoft Visio expanded swim lanes automatically to fit the shape, and it will continue to do it as you add additional shapes. We do have additional swim lane for CFO, Chief Financial Officer, but we do not have it named correctly, so we need to go back and give it the right name. If you are like me and trying to avoid usage of the acronyms, you might want to consider adding the full name of the Chief Financial Officer right into the swim lane. After receiving the purchase order, with all the required information, Chief Financial Officer needs to make a decision whether this is the right thing to do for the organization to acquire these goods or services. If Chief Financial Officer decides not to proceed with this acquisition, the process ends. But if CFO decides to proceed, it goes back to the procurement team, and procurement team sends details of the purchase order to the vendor. What's interesting, when I expand it to the next step, using embedded features of the Visio, it created a box in CFO swim lane. But this process step is not done by CFO, but rather is done by procurement team. To reflect that, we just need to drag the shape and place it right in the procurement swim lane. 
We can also change the way arrow is connected. Instead of connecting from the left, we can connect the arrow from the bottom. I did this by dragging the end of the arrow from one spot to another. We also might want to reflect that this step happens only if CFO approves original purchase order. Next step in the process goes back to the original requester, where requester needs to work with the vendor to receive goods or services. By default, box was added into the manager swim lane, but we need to drag the box back into the requester swim lane and position it along the grid lines Microsoft Visio provides. This step concludes the process, which should be reflected by the end symbol in the swim lane diagram. Diagram we have developed looks okay, but kind of plain. We can do a few things to make it look more professional and better meet our needs. One thing I would recommend you do first is to navigate to Design tab and try different design themes. Microsoft Visio provides a lot of different design themes and you can pick based on your company's logo or based on some other criteria that are important to you. I like this theme, which is called Linear, but your preferences obviously might be different. Once you select the theme, you can pick the variant based off of the theme. Variant leaves the fonts, sizes, main ideas of the theme in place, but allows you to pick different colors. I like the second variant as it provides calmer colors. Few things I'd like to pinpoint as we change the theme. For example, you see that the start shape, as well as diamonds for the decision making, got painted in a different color. I believe this is a good thing because it highlights the importance of the start and end points, as well as it highlights the importance of the decision-making diamonds. In addition to changing the theme, Visio provides you a quick opportunity to change the background. You can upload your own image or select from the pre-built images for the background. You might have noticed that because we're using cross-functional flowchart template from Microsoft, Visio added an additional tab which is specific to just this particular type of diagram. If you navigate to this tab, you can do a lot of different things. For example, you can show or hide separators in between the diagram and the swim lanes. You can show or hide title bar. You can choose different styles for your diagram, specific to swim lane type diagram. You can also arrange your shapes differently by changing the margins on the diagram. You can also change the direction of the flow with one click, from left to right to right to left. And you can also change the orientation of the diagram from horizontal to vertical with just one click. I am going to stick with the original type of diagram and just click the undo button. There are also some additional options available to insert swim lane, separators, or new page, and I would recommend you explore them on your own. The best way to create entity relationship diagram in Visio is to search for the keyword database. Even though there is UML database notation template available, I prefer Crow's Food Database Notation because it provides more flexibility. In Crow's Food Database Notation, there are only six stencils available, but they provide tremendous flexibility and everything necessary to build an exceptional ERD diagram. The main purpose behind Entity Relationship Diagram is to provide documentation as well as to align everybody on the database model. ERD Diagram shows the relationships of entities stored in a database. It also shows logic and business rules associated with the data. And this information can be represented by logical data model, which is independent from database implementation. To show specific technical implementation for particular database, you typically use physical data model ERD diagram. If you do not need to describe data types, you use simple entity stencils. But if you do need data types, then you use entity with attribute. Data types are represented on the right-hand side. Typically, they are exclusive, and you don't mix both types. For the purposes of my demo, I will be using entities without data types. I'm going to delete this entity, and you delete it by selecting it and using the Delete button. We will be building online e-commerce store ERD diagram. To add the title to the diagram, you select the text and then type the title of the diagram. There are three main entities that are relevant for online e-commerce store diagram. The first relevant entity is customers. To change the current entity we have on the screen to customers, you click on the title and type the name. Next step is to assign attributes to the entity. You can do it by clicking on the attribute name and typing the attribute. But before we go ahead and do it, let's take a look at the key terms used in ERD diagrams. 
entity could be presented an ERD diagram without data types. Most of the entities also require unique identifiers. This unique identifiers called primary key and foreign keys. Primary key is used on the entity itself to define uniqueness. Foreign keys are used to reference primary keys and typically used to define relationships. In addition to defining entities with their attributes and data types, you also need to define relationships between entities. These relationships are called cardinalities. Typically, customer's entity contains at least seven main attributes. You have customer ID, which uniquely identifies the customer. You also have customer email, password, name, and phone. You also have billing address and shipping address. One thing I'd like to point out is that some data modelers would like to just give primary key a name of ID. This way, name would be identical to all the IDs for all the entities that you create. This might be a good idea and it will provide some simplicity if you decide to follow the standard. After defining customers, we can now define orders. If orders entity is very similar to customers, you can just copy and paste it and then make all necessary modifications. Instead of doing that, I'm going to delete this entity and bring in brand new entity. Typically, order entity will also have unique identifier. It will also have order amount, shipping address, order email, order date, and order status. To show all products customer placed on the order, we need to introduce new entity. It is typically called order details or order line item. Order line item will have unique ID, price, SKU, and quantity. Each order line item is linked to the product in our catalog. Let's introduce the product entity. Typically, product entity will have unique ID, SKU, product name, price, weight, product description, image or link to the image, and thumbnail or link to the thumbnail. As you have learned, to define successful ERD diagram, you need to define entities with the attributes and data types. You need to create unique identifiers in the form of primary and foreign keys, and you need to define relationships in the form of cardinality. Cardinality is typically defined as a line connecting two entities. And on both sides of the line, you can have different symbols. There are at least four types of cardinalities available. And for simplicity, we put the symbol only on the right side of the line. Zero or more cardinality. One or more. One and only one cardinality. And zero or one cardinality. To define relationships, you need to use relationship stencil. You just drag it into the diagram and then connect two entities with relationship stencil. You can adjust locations of the entities to make sure the line is straight. To do that, you select the entity and you can use either mouse or keyboard. Using keyboard provides you with higher precision. A relationship between customers and orders is one to many. One customer can have many orders. To reflect this relationship, we need to assign one and only one on the customer side and one or more on the order side. To do this, you need to select the relationship line and do right mouse click and set begin symbol as one and only one on the customer side and send end symbol as one or more. So this way, one customer can have many orders and this relationship shows this cardinality. Now there's still something missing here and this something is unique ID of the customer on the particular order. Right now, we only have order ID presented on the diagram. Now we need to represent customer ID for the particular order. To do that, we need to add an additional attribute on orders table. You add additional attribute by selecting an existing attribute and clicking insert primary key after. The only difference, it's not going to be primary key and it's going to be foreign key. Because of that, we need to make couple adjustments. We need to select the attribute and do right click and set foreign key and uncheck primary key. We also need to rename this attribute by double clicking on the attribute and adding a new name, which would be customer ID. So now we have relationship between customer, where customer is represented by unique ID, and orders. Each order now can be linked back to the particular customer. There are a couple important rules related to primary key. Primary key is unique across the particular table. Primary key is also static. It never changes. And the third rule is primary key cannot be null. The value of primary key cannot be empty. In the similar way as we define relationship between customers and orders, we need to define relationship between orders and order line items. One order can have many order line items. And in a similar way, the relationship needs to be defined between order line items and products. 
one product can be on many line items, so there is one to many relationship between product and order line items. For both of these relationships, we need to define cardinality as well as primary foreign key relationships. Once you define all the relationships, you can rearrange the objects so they fit the available space much better, or as you see fit. One important consideration I'd like to point out is that the foreign key is outside of primary key. The separator line separates primary key and other attributes. Because foreign key is not part of the primary key, it should be outside of the primary key, so it should be below the line. This diagram already looks great, but you can make it look even better. Some people are very particular and would like to use specific color themes for their diagrams. I have great news for these people. Microsoft Visio provides exceptional capabilities to improve design and make your Visio diagrams look extremely professional. To change the design, you navigate to the Design tab and by default, and you have a lot of choices for the themes. You can select any available theme and as you navigate through the themes, it will change the design on the fly. So you can pick any design that you'd like. For example, I like this design because the dark blue contrasts with the red color for the logo. And both red and blue are primary color on the color wheel. Once you have selected design, you can choose variants for that particular design. It will leave fonts and design in place, but would allow you to select and refine the colors. If you need to, you can also change the background. You can choose background with the particular color, or you can choose background maybe as a grayish color with the specific attributes. In addition to changing background color, you can also consider adding borders and titles. Not everything will match with your theme, but you can try different options that are available. Once you're happy with the design, you can use Save As option and save your diagram as PDF file to share with your colleagues and team members. The best way to jumpstart on UML class diagram is to use provided template. If you search for available templates, Microsoft Visio provides two templates for UML class diagrams. One is just simple UML class template, and second one is UML class with interfaces. Depending what you're trying to build, you can choose either available template. To start building class diagram, all you need to do is to bring the stencil and start populating the members of the class. So what is UML class diagram and why do we need it? UML class diagram is intended to provide a blueprint for entire system design. This blueprint works very well regardless of which programming language you use to build your system. And the reason it works so extremely well is because UML class diagram shows what types of objects you will be building. It shows objects, properties and methods as well as static relationships between objects. To start editing class in Microsoft Visio all you need to do is click on the class name. In this video, we will be building UML class diagram for online e-commerce store. Let's look at the typical classes we might need for this type of diagram. There is minimum of two classes we might need. First one is customer. Customer typically has name, address, phone. We also would like to capture search history of the customer, as well as allow customer to place the order. I would like to pinpoint couple considerations for the customer class. Customer always has name, address, and phone, and typically this is a single one-to-one -one relationship between customer and these types of attributes. Search history done by the customer on online e-commerce website typically represents multiple items. I highlighted first four items on the list as blue, indicating that they are the attributes of the class, versus placing order, which is something that is done by the customer as an action. This leads us to very important consideration, as each class can contain properties which represent data attributes of the class, as well as methods which represent behaviors of what class can do. Both properties and methods are members of the class, but you use above the line area in the class to show properties, and you use below the line area in the class to show methods. For example, to add customer name as an attribute, you just double click on the member name and type in name and then define what type of attribute it is going to be. In our case, it is string. Then you hit enter. To insert address, we would need additional space above the line. To get it, we need to right mouse click on the name, which is an existing attribute, and say we're trying to insert member after. Once the placeholder for the new attribute was added, we can just edit it and add address as another attribute. Because search history can contain more than one item, we will come back to define the type of data attribute that the search history will represent. Methods for the class defined in very similar way. 
all you need to do is to double click on the existing method and type in the actual name for the method. If you need to add additional methods, you can right click and say insert member after. To define e-commerce order class, we need to bring in the new class object and define properties and methods for the class. Couple important considerations here. Based on the limitations of programming languages, there cannot be any spaces in between the words of the attribute name or method name. So you see there are no spaces in between search history and place order. Another important consideration, class doesn't have to have both properties and methods. It can only contain properties, like in case of order. So if we don't have any methods, we can just remove this element. In addition to defining properties and methods, UML class diagram also helps you define relationships between classes. There are many types of relationships you can define in two main categories. First, you need to define plurality between objects. In this category, you define if the relationship is one-to-one -one or one-to-many. In general relationship category, you have at least five things to consider. For example, there is an association type relationship between customer and order. One customer can place many orders. To depict it on the diagram, you need to bring an association stencil and connect it between two objects. We can select the object and align them to make sure this is a straight line. The actual name of one-to-many relationship in UML is multiplicity relationship. By default, association line does not show multiplicity. To enable multiplicity, you need to select the line, do a right mouse click, and select show multiplicity. Typically, you show multiplicity by showing one next to the customer and showing many next to the order and then deleting items that you don't need. Currently, this line shows association type relationship between customer and orders and also shows one-to-many relationship between customer and order because one customer can submit multiple orders. Generalization or inheritance relationship typically shows us is a relationship between child class and the parent class. Typically, this type of relationship is ideal to show reusable elements in the class diagram because it shows that the child class inherits the common functionality defined in the parent class. For example, in the real world, there might be at least two types of customers, business customer and individual consumer customer. Both of these types of customers might inherit all the attributes and methods from the generic customer object. And in addition to this, they might have their own properties and methods specific to their function. For example, business customers may be approved to buy with purchase orders. And this is why it's important to have credit limits for business customers. They can also place their orders on credit versus consumers who only are able to place orders using credit card. To show generalization type relationship in the class diagram, we need to use generalization stencil. Once we bring it into the picture, we can connect it to the objects and make sure the relationship is established. Once we've established relationship for one object, we can copy and paste the relationship stencil, or we can bring in the new one. Aggregation type relationship is created when one class is formed as a collection of other classes. For example, to represent search history for the customer, you might consider creating a dedicated class. It will be connected with the customer class through the search history ID, and it will contain the collection of the searched items. You might also have at least two methods if customer was looking for the particular item. To represent aggregation type relationship in the class diagram, you need to use aggregation stencil. Once you bring it to the diagram, you can connect it to the right object. You can also select the object and use keyboard arrow keys to move the object to get to the straight line in your connection. Composition relationship is a variation of aggregation relationship. Composition typically illustrates that a strong life cycle is present between the classes. Relationship between customer and search history items could be represented either by aggregation or by composition. If you feel that composition should be used, you can either bring in a new stencil or you can just right mouse click on the existing relationship and change the connector type. You can do it by selecting a composition type relationship instead of aggregation. Realization relationship is typically used when one entity, typically an interface, defines a set of functionalities as a contract for another entity, which is typically just a regular class. In this relationship, class typically realizes the contract by implementing all the functionalities defined in the interface. For example, we might define an interface that will be called order processor. 
This interface will have two methods, validate payment and validate items availability. We might also consider defining two classes that will realize this interface, business order processor and consumer order processor. Business order processor class will realize all the methods of the interface and implement them, as well as it will implement one additional business order specific methods, which is validate credit limit. Very similar situation we will do with consumer order processor. Consumer order processor will realize all the methods and implement all of them for order processor interface, as well as consumer specific method, which is validate credit card. To show realization relationship between classes and interface, we can use realization stencil. Once you bring it into the diagram, you can connect it to the relevant object. Microsoft Visio provides excellent features to make your diagram look professional. For example, you can add your logo into the diagram and place it in any corner where you would like. You can also use align features of Visio to align the objects on the diagram. For example, the relationship between interfaces and classes doesn't look very straight. So we can zoom in into this area, we can move interface a little bit up, and then we can look at the lines to see how can we align these lines. And the best way to align the lines might be to align the objects themselves. To do that, we can select the objects, click align, and we can align middle. And you see by aligning the objects, it aligned the lines as well. We can also use design features of Microsoft Visio to make the diagram look very professional. To do that, let's navigate to the Design tab on the ribbon, and then there are a lot of different themes available. All you need to do is switch between the themes to see which one fits what you're trying to accomplish the best. For example, I like this theme. It's called Linear. I'm going to select it. I can also select different variants that are available for this theme, which will bring in different variants for the given theme. You can also choose different colors within the variant. For example, if you like the variant, if you'd like how it looks, you can just play with the colors. You can also change the background for the diagram. You can either choose one of the available backgrounds that matches the theme, or you can bring in your own image that you think might be a good fit. Once you're done with the design, you can save diagram as PDF file. This is only one of the available options, and it allows you to distribute the diagram for many people that may not have Visio. Once you save it as PDF, Visio automatically brings up the Adobe PDF Viewer and allow you to preview the diagram. And if you're using Microsoft Teams to collaborate with other people on your project, you can bring in Visio file by navigating to the Files tab in your channel, uploading VSDX file, and once file is in place, you can show the file as a separate tab if this information is important for every team member. To do that, you just need to click the plus button, select Microsoft Visio app, and pick the file. Now this file is available for everybody to view. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.